Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. This is actually a replacement video that I, uh, for one that I did earlier in which I made an egregious math error and then carried the result of that bad error all the way through the entire uh, episode. So we're going to do it a little differently this time. What I have set up here is a standard ham station. I've got uh, house voltage coming in. Here is the uh, reference station power supply. And then this goes into the Tentec Jupiter, which comes out through this meter here to show us how many watts. And I have a telegraph key and it's set up so that when I hold down the telegraph key, I'm transmitting the full power that this thing will give me. Okay, so now let's go through and take a look at what we've got. First of all, let's take a look at the voltage here. This is 119.9 volts, okay, and uh, 120 volts. Okay, we'll use 120. And the current idle current into here is 0.38 amps but the power factor is 0.5 so let's write these things down the first was 1 1 9.9 and the current was 0 0.37 amps and the power factor is 0 0.51. Now, how do you get the wattage? Remember in AC, the current can be at a different phase from the voltage. Our voltage reference is our phase reference, and then we have our amps and then we have our power factor and AC power equals the voltage times the current times the power factor which is the cosine of the angle between the two so if we multiply this out it's one one nine point nine times point Oh, three, seven. No, it's wrong. One, one, nine point nine times point three, seven times the power factor point five, one. And that gives us twenty two, twenty two point six watts just sitting here. Okay, just sitting there and running the power supply and the radio. So this is our idle right here. Now let's take a look at what we've got here. Okay, we are looking at two amps at 13 volts. Two amps at 13 volts, which is 26 watts that it's sending on to here. Okay, so this goes between here and here. This goes between here and here. And now there's nothing coming out. Okay, so we've got 22.6 watts here, 26 watts there. Now, let's put key down. Okay, key down, we measure, okay, 118 volts. Three point four six amps. Okay, and the power factor is 
okay, which is the cosine of the phase angle. Note that we've got a slight discrepancy between these two here, um, probably because of the power factor. Okay, now, so we're going to multiply this out. 118 um, times 3.46 times 0.65 is 265 watts. 265 watts. Okay, this is key down. So, now I want you to notice this. The voltage is about the same. I've got a fairly long extension cord here. The power factor changes as this goes toward a more resistive load. Okay, and um, we have a power is the volts times the amps. So the volt amps here multiplied by the power factor, you get that. Now, key down 118 volts, 3.46 amps. Now, note that's 3 amps in this cord, in this cord. Okay. 0.65 power factor, 265 watts. Okay, now let's take a look at what's coming out of here. We have seventeen amps. Seventeen amps. The voltage is actually um, 14, okay, now in DC there's no power factor to consider, so that's 1.7 times 1.4 is 238 watts. 238 watts, okay, 265 watts in, 238 watts out. Uh, it, that's consumed in here. We'll get into what goes over there in just a minute. But what we are sending to the radio is 238 watts. 238 watts, okay. Now let's compute the um, efficiency of this. So we have 238. Oops. 2.38. Uh, divided by 265 is a, um, well, I did that wrong, obviously. 238 divided by 265. Okay, 89% efficiency. Okay, so the power supply in this case is 89 cent efficient. Let that up for a second. Okay, now we're going to look at this radio. So I'm going to scoot down here. Okay, so this is the radio, which is getting 238 watts, okay, and it's putting out 92.5 watts. Okay, we're reading then the, this is going into this, going into the dummy load. Okay, 92.7 watts. And now we can calculate the efficiency of our transmitter. Now this is something that nobody ever talks about, and it's going to blow you away. We're going to take... 92.7 watts divided by 238 watts is a 39% efficient. Oh, wow. These numbers are normal, though. And you have key down to have close to 20 amps and here to have um, this is very efficient now if we take the efficiency all the way back to here 
265 watts. Okay, so if we take 92, 92.2 watts divided by 265 watts, you get 34% efficient when you go all the way back to the wall plug. Okay, so this is very interesting. The radio is putting out 92.7 watts, which is perfectly reasonable. Uh, do I, I have the power up all the way. Now, of the energy that comes in DC, it's converting 39% of that to RF. Of course, on receive, it's, you know, you've got about a, a one watt speaker, so uh, it's extremely inefficient on receive. You're putting a uh, couple amps in, most of that goes to running the computers and so on, okay? And 34% going all the way back here. So if this thing's putting out 100 watts, which is close to 100 watts, okay, you are drawing 265 watts from the wall. Now, I want you to notice this. This is 118 volts. This is normal uh, house supply current. We live in the country. We're miles from the nearest substation. So there is a little bit of degradation in voltage, but not much. Not enough to worry about. Still start, starts up my big air compressor. Also runs my amplifier. Now note the current here. Three. Three amps. Three amps. Whereas over here, it was 17 amps. Okay, 17 amps. Now, how can you get 17 from 3.46? Well, the magic is that we converted this voltage, AC, down to this voltage, DC. And the power is in DC, amps times volts is power. In AC, and I'm sorry to throw this term at you, the power factor, just take it as something that utilities have to deal with. It has to do with the inductive nature of the load. It takes a little bit more power than it needs, and then it gives it back on the next cycle. So 118 volts, 3.46 amps, and uh, that does the job that you need. Now this is pretty cool because what we can see here is that we don't have to worry about the current here. It's 3.46 amps, and you very likely have it plugged into a 15 amp circuit. So there is plenty, plenty of reserve capacity in that circuit. But the watts don't lie. Okay, we've got this watts. There's an issue here, I think, with the power factor. Um, but on the, the load down, it's real clear. 265 watts coming through this cord, 238 watts coming through this cord, um, 92.7 watts coming through the coax and going into the cantenna. So what's happening in here? Well, what's happening in here is that only 39% of the power it receives from the power supply is actually converted into RF in CW. And you get a similar efficiency for single sideband. And you're going, why? Why isn't this converting at all? Well, I've got an answer for that. Okay, so what we have shown in the setup here is switching from AC to DC and to RF. And we've shown efficiencies along the way. We've discovered that our radio is terribly inefficient. 39%, that means 61% is turned into heat. This is why your radio likely has a fan on it. And it only comes on when transmitting. Okay, now this particular radio can be held key down uh, for up to half an hour. That's very unusual. Most Japanese radios key down for just a few minutes at most. This thing right here doesn't like to be run full. It was getting a little warm. Heat, it goes into heat. But the important factor is, even though there's 17 to 20 amps here between the power supply and the radio, there's only two or three, 
three and a half amps through here. And that's what the difference is, taking into account the voltage in all the different units. Now, why is this so inefficient? The reason that it is inefficient is because it's designed to be used for voice. In order to do single sideband, you have to have a linear amplifier. Now, there are two classes of amplifier that can be made linear cheaply. One, class A. Two, class AB, or push-pull, class B. So all the same thing. These systems work with those old-fashioned style, but still new components type amplifiers. The thing about class A amplifiers and any linear amplifier is that it's quite inefficient. All the time there is something running through these amplifiers. And so um, they have to uh, keep the amplifiers properly fed and cooled and what they're going to get out is something in the middle of that for uh, an output. Now when you do single sideband, a very interesting little dance happens the amount of power required by the radio goes up and down with your voice signal. That puts a big demand on this, that this thing always keep the same voltage even though the load is varying intensely. Okay, So there you have it, an explanation of the power from the wall, the power supply, the radio, and the antenna, or in this case, the dummy load. So, there you have it. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and like and share. And we do have a Patreon set up at patreon.com slash ke0og. And until we next meet, 73.